Hi, I'm Bill Saunders. I'm a senior vice president, senior counsel at Americans United for Life. I've been a lawyer for more than 25 years, and I've been a human rights lawyer for uh, probably about 20 of those years. What I want to speak to you about is what human rights is and the importance of international law in U.S. courts. I'll be brief, but I think it's interesting and important. You know, if you think about it, sometimes when we talk about abortion or euthanasia or destructive embryo research, people will say that's a kind of a category of kind of special uh, people uh, interested in a particular kind of narrow issue, but it's not. It's the very basis of human rights. I mean, just logically, you know that if you're going to have human rights of any kind, you have to have the right to life because you can't enjoy any right unless you're alive. Now, as a lawyer, I can tell you there's a bunch of documents, some treaties and some statements that go back to the mid-1950s that lay out basic human rights. All these documents, I think, if you read them fairly, are, as we might say, pro-life because all these documents are against the arbitrary killing of another human being. Now, none of the documents mention the word abortion or euthanasia, but if you think about the context in which these documents came from, I think you'll see, you'll see my point. These documents sprang from the revulsion to World War II, and what happened in World War II was the killing of uh, innocent, defenseless human populations, bombing uh, civilians, uh, torturing people and experimenting on people in concentration camps, killing innocent people in concentration camps, in other words, violating the basic dignity of the human person. And so this document, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the other documents that came out after it aim to state standards by which we'll never do those kind of things again. So I think logically and simply, the right to life has to be there because these documents are about not taking the life of innocent people for arbitrary reasons such as race or age or something like that. Now there is an argument that, and then let me mention there is a web page called SanJoseArticles.com in which this argument is made in more detail by a number of people including myself who draft something called the San Jose Articles and I'm one of the signers of it and I invite you to go to that page and get this in a little more detail than I can give you now. But this is also for Americans something for you to be aware of, of the relevance of these kind of issues uh, here in America on the abortion issue. We all know that abortion was created from nothing by the U.S. Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade. Well, one day the U.S. Supreme Court will reverse Roe v. Wade, but on the day that happens, pro-abortion lawyers will go in and say there's a human right to abortion. So we have to be prepared and we have to make the arguments and we have to have the understanding now that all human rights are based on the right to life. They include the right to life. And therefore, on the day in which we overturn Roe v. Wade, we won't have the Supreme Court saying, well, there's no constitutional right to abortion, but there's some kind of international right to abortion. And again, I invite you to visit the webpage I mentioned as well as AUL.org and learn more about this.